Gavin Menzies calls Who Discovered America his swan song book. Mostly retired, the octogenarian adventurer is passing the baton to his co-author, Ian Hudson, who speaks to us today from London. Ian, I've been looking forward to this visit. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you very much for having me, Steve. It's, it's good to finally talk to you. The book begins with Gavin demolishing the theory that the earliest settlers in America came across the Bering Strait. What's wrong with that concept? It seems pretty far-fetched, given that over a thousand miles of tundra with pretty little vegetation, the wildlife was pretty, pretty scarce on the ground. It would have been much easier to go by sea, where you've got access to, to fish and you've got access to seaweed and kelp. Let's talk about the Minoans a people group that Gavin associates with Atlantis. The book repeats his assertion that they were voyaging to America before 2000 BC. What's the evidence? The evidence for the Minoans coming to the Americas was all started off by Gavin's visit to an island called Santorini in the Mediterranean and saw images on frescoes that showed these seagoing ships that had up to eight sails and I think 30 oars on either side. Was, with Gavin's experience in the Navy, he was able to say that he could agree that these ships were of ocean-going capabilities. Why did the Minoans stop coming? The reason why they stopped these great voyages was because of the eruption of this volcano called Thera, which happened in around 1500 BC, and that was a hugely kind of cataclysmic event that I think the likes have not been seen ever before or ever since. There's a reason Gavin developed different theories from those promulgated by establishment historians. He served in the Royal Navy between 1953 and 1970. Gavin's belief in the long-range Chinese voyages is based on his knowledge of wind and ocean currents. But after his first book was published, DNA evidence started pouring in. Ian, what do we now know about the genetic similarities between the people we call Native Americans and the Chinese? We got in touch with a doctor called Tony Friedarkis, and his research found that statistically significant East Asian admixture in up to 40% of the Native American peoples he tested. The obvious question is, if Chinese DNA accounts for up to 40% of the genetics of Native Americans, what accounts for the rest? There's been a lot of research carried out into African voyages across the Atlantic to the New World, but we haven't really had the time to focus on that, so we've focused primarily on the Asian voyages and the Minoans. Of course, there's more to America than the U.S. Some of your most compelling evidence comes from Central and South America. What similarities did you discover in addition to human DNA? Our research is very multidisciplinary, as well as looking into history and art and geography. We also have brought in the sciences as well. So we have study of DNA and parasites and plants and animals, and it all kind of links in together. Getting back to Columbus, your book claims he wasn't even the first Italian to visit America in the last millennium. What's your theory about Marco Polo of Venice? Part of the intrigue of the Marco Polo story is this map that he passed down to his daughters held at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., and there's a picture of it in our book, Who Discovered America, and it shows the coast of China, and it shows Japan, and it shows the Kurile Islands, and then it shows Alaska, and it shows Canada, and it shows the west coast of North America. In other reading, I've come across accounts of Egyptian-type mummies and artifacts found and covered up in caves along the Grand Canyon and also a Phoenician writing discovered in South America. Do you have an opinion on these claims? It's like a hidden city in the Grand Canyon, but then I remember reading that the claims were never substantiated, so I'm not sure about that, even though I would say that there is a huge amount of evidence carried out also by, by Dr. Thompson that shows that maize, for example, which we know is a, a, a plant native to America, that has been found in carvings in Egypt. There is a Phoenician coin, I believe, which I can't remember where it is at the moment, but it has a thing that depicts a map of the world, or showing at least Africa, Europe, and then the Atlantic Ocean, suggesting that they got to America because it was found in America. Ian, 
What's next as you continue Gavin Menzies' legacy? I think to do that, we've been looking into documentaries, we've been looking into exhibitions, we've been look, looking into kind of spreading the word uh, outside of not just books. We've kind of got to roll with the times and see, see if we can find new ways of, of helping to spread the word and get people interested in our research. Thanks for speaking with us, Ian. You and Gavin paint a beautiful word picture of your travels and excite the archaeologist in all of us. Well, thank you very much for listening to what I have to say, and I hope your listeners will all enjoy this and uh, read the book. Ian Hudson is co-author of Who Discovered America? The Untold Story of the Peopling of the Americas. You can learn more by visiting gavinmenzies.net. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.